My name is Brittany Hart, and I'm doing a presentation on the story What Terrible Thing It Was by Esme Wajung Wong, and it was published in the Best American Short Stories 2018. We start the story with a poem at the very top of the page, and it reads, Becky Goo, Becky Goo, won't you play with me? I can't, said Becky, I'm hanging in a tree. Becky Goo, Becky Goo, let me braid your hair. I can't, said Becky, I've died way over there. Becky Goo, Becky Goo, where are you today? I'm here, said Becky, and I'll remain until you pay. So as we quickly learn, this poem is repeated throughout the story as it is a part of the voices that Wendy hears. I've included this at the beginning because I think that this poem kind of foreshadows the rest of the story. Because when it says, I'm here, said Becky, and I'll remain until you pay, I think that's kind of showing that Wendy is going to have these voices and this fear until they do find the murderer and she will not be settled until that happens. The first approach I am taking to analyzing the story is the formalistic approach. There were many different elements at play here that really helped evoke an emotional response in the readers. Those include mood, style, and tone. We see style from the author from the very beginning in the word choice that she uses. She uses a lot of imagery to help create a mood for the readers. We see this from the very beginning with the quote, My toes are ice cold, my Anter Wellbrook Psychiatric Hospital. I know without looking that they've gone deathly pale beneath my socks and shoes, as though shuttling blood to my vital organs will sustain me in this place that is not old enough to be quaint. Stained orange carpet, cement walls, cottage cheese ceiling. We already see a sense of an ominous tone from the author, and I really think that this helps set the mood for the entire story, which I think is fear with a sense of just unsettling anxiety. At the very end of the story, we see another sense of style in which the author uses varying sentence lengths to also create the mood of fear and anxiety. On page 300, it says, I turn on the tap and let the water run cool over my fingers. I stand at the sink for a long time until I cannot remember what I am doing. I lose the next move. Suddenly, and too loudly, a girl calls my name. Here we can see that fear is a constant central ideal to the story, which will later relate to the theme of the story. Another big element we see in the story is the characterization of Wendy. After Becky's death, we see a very shy and grief-stricken Wendy who is apologizing for things like running out of tea for Becky's parents. We really see her change over a very short amount of time into a Wendy that is so desperate to solve the problems that she has going on in her head that she's willing to get electroconversion therapy. So I think this just shows how much she's changed from this shy, quiet Wendy to this desperate Wendy who's really just reaching out for any sort of help that she can find. So once again, I think we see the factor of fear here. I think the big thing that changed and helped characterize Wendy was fear and that was the reason that these mental health issues have arised. Next we're going to look at the psychological approach to help analyze the story. As we were just discussing, we see the factor of fear playing a constant role in Wendy's life and that's kind of the reason that she is who she is today and I think that is a very big psychological factor in Winnie's life as we do see some theories start to come to play. One of the theories I think plays a big role in Winnie's life is Eric Erickson's idea of identity versus role confusion. This is a state that someone's in between the years of 12 and 20, which is where Wendy would have been when Becky died. Uh, this is when someone either figures out who they are and where they want to be or there's something that happens that prevents them from figuring that out, which will cause a lot of problems later on in life. I think this is exactly what we see in Wendy. With such a traumatic event, such as Becky being killed, this prevented Wendy from being able to figure out who she is and who she wanted to be, and later on created such problems in her head that it, she has formed schizophrenia. 
on top of this, I also think we see some ideas from Freud with super ego. I think Wendy really struggles with keeping her super ego at bay. Uh, super ego is kind of your moral compass and helps you behave how you should. And I think a lot of Wendy's struggles is that she thinks that she's not behaving how society wants her to or how she should. And so that's why she's seeking out the help that she is now because she just wants to be able to find her place and fit in with society. I really see this in the quote that says, I prepared for this. On the bus to the hospital, I stared straight ahead and told myself that it was imperative for me to be honest about my situation. No matter how terrified I was or how many stories I've read online about people who had permanently damaged their ability to form new memories. This shows how scared Wendy was, but how desperate she was to be honest and get the help that she thinks that she needed because that's what society has kind of told her. The final approach I'll be using to analyze the story is the sociological approach. From the very start of the story, we see there's a very big race factor at play in this story. In every situation that Wendy was in, she would notice the race of the people around her. On page 292, she notes, it's the doctor. He is white, like the receptionist. On 296, while she's on the bus, she says, I wait between a 20-something white guy scrolling through his phone and an older white woman scuffing the toes of her red cowboy boots. When she gets home, she talks about her husband and says, but Dennis is white and male and good-looking without being threatening. She even talks about when Becky was still alive, that she, quote, I used to avoid being in the same room as Becky. It was too much to have two Chinese girls in one place. I think this just shows that Wendy is very aware of her race and the races of people around her, and I think it causes a lot of stress and anxiety in her life right now, especially because of the political race that's happening. A part of the story that really stood out to me about this was towards the end when Wendy is on Twitter and it states, I read an article about people chanting, lock her up at a rally. I read about a Muslim school teacher in New York who had her hijab torn off by a stranger on the broad daylight. MCM lies is one reply. I read about gaslighting. I read an essay about having a younger brother with brain cancer, and I start to cry, even though I don't have any siblings and no one I know is dying. Once again, I think we just see the idea of fear here. I think we really see just how scared and helpless and confused Wendy is. She's really starting to break down. I think even though this is Wendy's story, I think this really relates to how a lot of people around the world and in the United States was feeling that night and at that moment. So finally, through all of this analysis, I think the theme to the entire story is that new trauma and fear make us relive old ones. I think we see Wendy having such stressors and new fear in her life that it's digging up old stressors and fear and ultimately this is what's making her struggle so much right now in the present. I think from this we should learn that fear is not something you should let control your life and that you have to learn from your past and move forward.